today we're getting a little roasty probably not i don't know we'll see how my mood goes throughout this video but i'm gonna be talking about today all of the also if you see my arm moving over here aria's right here so we're playing we're playing together i'm gonna be talking about all of my disappointing books of the year slash like worst books that I read but I really don't like putting the like worst books labels on it even though I know that like when people are looking like best and worst like I like the I like the look of that of being like here are the best books I read this year and here are the worst however I don't necessarily think any of these books where are where's my list some of them I would say are bad like genuinely bad books but I I don't want to say that like anything that anyone reads is like oh that's like a bad book and like that's your favorite no we're not trying to judge anyone for what they read here so if any of the books that are on my list here are some of your favorites i'm so happy that they brought you joy like who am i who am i to say that you know like this book is bad like i'm literally nobody so while these books may be some of my least favorite that doesn't mean that they're bad books or like inherently unenjoyable or that other people if i see them that they're like your favorites that i'm like really that's one of your favorites it just didn't work for me and i'm very much like on this whole channel here like not every book is for every person because i know i like very taboo books and i know some of the books that i love people are like that is way too much and i'm like that's totally fine like everyone just has their own opinion on books and there is literally not going to be a single book this is going to work for every single person in the world. Otherwise, like if you want to read any of these, like please go for it. Obviously, I'm not like not recommending them. I'm just saying that they didn't work for me, and that's okay. Let's normalize people not liking the same books. Like it's totally okay. Everyone can have their own opinion on a book. They're just mine. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven disappointing slash works books, and I'll kind of like explain the worst slash disappointing like which one i think it more is as we go through but let's jump in come up and say hi oh she's wild girl she's only what she was sleeping until i pulled out the ring light and then she's like oh of her laying on the list stop it first book on my list is gabriel's inferno by sylvan reynard reynard um this one and i read the second one which i think is gabriel's rapture I didn't read the third and I will never be reading the third book in this even though I hate leaving series unfinished but like you literally couldn't pay me honestly to read the third book in this. I hated this experience. <laughs> I really did and it was I'm going to say it was one of the most disappointing because like I don't think it's a bad book but it was very very disappointing for me because this was like hyped up to me as being like the end all be all student teacher romance like every you know how like Fifty Shades is kind of like known as being like the BDSM one, even though I know like there are a lot of mixed thoughts on that. I've never read that series before, but that's kind of like what you think of when you think of like a BDSM novel, you think of like Fifty Shades. And this is what I kind of thought about when I thought of student teacher. So then I had very high expectations. Student teacher is my favorite trope of all time. And this was garbage. <laughs> I hated it. So obviously it's a student teacher. And guys, for all these books, I did not really get prepared for this and looking up like names and like trying to give like really detailed synopses and like writing that out for reference for me when I'm doing this. Because truly I don't care about these books enough to do that for. Pretty sure her name is Julia. And his name is obviously Gabriel. I, I know his name's Gabriel and I'm pretty sure her name is Julia. And she's a college student, very innocent, naive, quiet, meek. I don't know if this was written by a man. I tried to like look up this author and apparently it's like a pen name. But if this was written by a woman, I'd be surprised because it gives very much man writing a woman energy. And just like her descriptions, her meekness, like everything about her was very like, ee -hee -hee, oh me, I'm just like a little mouse and I don't know anything. Oh, she annoyed the hell out of me. And obviously she was like untouched. And I don't hate that, but in this it just didn't work. And Gabriel, of course, is like this brooding guy who's like, I'm no good for you and blah, 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 whatever. He was her professor. She was his student. He was like a very disliked professor by other people. But then of course she catches his eye and they actually know each other in the past. Blah, blah, blah. I literally don't know. And I don't remember. I just remember this being like so miserable to sit through, <laughs> honestly, and just like wanting it to be over. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like either of them individually and I didn't like them together. It was so slow going. We got to the end and I was like ready for the payoff of this spice that I've been waiting for. And it was like very mild. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I've sat through this whole thing for almost nothing. Just nothing about this worked for me. But because I hate leaving series unfinished and I thought, okay, you know, like they're together at the end of this one. Let's give the second book a try. 
and see, you know, if I like them more in the second one, they're, when they're more into their relationship, still fucking no. I didn't like the second one at all. I listened to it on audiobook, which could have been part of it because that was the first like full audiobook that I've ever listened to. And I'm too much of like a visual person that I need to like actually be sit down and reading. If I just hear it, like I don't absorb any of that information. That's why school always sucked because like, unless there's a PowerPoint, I wasn't like absorbing things. Audiobooks are not for me, but I also think that, that was the only way that I could even slightly consume this second book. And I, it was just not good. I hated it. Okay, next is a book that I know it's one of my friends like favorites, but she doesn't watch this, so it doesn't matter. Olivia, you won't even see this, but this book I hated. And that is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. So this is a thriller. It's not a romance, which as you guys know, I predominantly read romance and fantasy on this channel. And that's just like what I read in real life. But I do like a thriller every now and then. And so my friend had this copy and she was like, you have to read this thriller. It's incredible. Like I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, okay, because I'm thrillers are very hit or miss because it's all about the twist at the end and the twist can completely ruin it. And the twist completely ruined this one for me here. And that's where like, I completely hated this book <laughs> was I just hated the ending twist. Cause then it like, it was just like, really? So we went through this whole book for nothing. Luckily it was short. So like, it wasn't that long to like sit through, but it follows this woman who was married to this guy and she, does she begin to think that he's cheating on her or something? You know, she's like unhappy. He like goes away for work a lot and she's starting to get like suspicions of him. And then she finds his girlfriend or who she thinks is his girlfriend. And then she notices that she has like bruises on herself from like what she's assuming that is like domestic violence. So then she thinks that her husband is assaulting this woman in the city and living with her. Partially, I don't remember otherwise, and also I don't wanna give anything away spoiler-wise, but the ending of this book, I hated. I It just had a lot of the tropes and mystery books that don't work for me with like the unreliable narrator and the twist at the end is one of the tropes that I hate the most in like thrillers, and that just like explains everything away, which I'm not gonna say in case you wanna read it. I would not recommend, but you do you. You read whatever you wanna read. I just, nothing about this book worked for me and I read it when I was on vacation. So at least it was like a quick poolside read, but it just honestly, it made me angry. It like made me angry. Next I would put in like the worst, so like the wives I would also put in like worst slash disappointing and that Gabriel's Inferno wasn't disappointing because like, I don't think those two are necessarily like bad books. They were just very, very disappointing to me. Where this one I would put in like worst books. Sorry, not sorry. And that is Echo. Hunting Season by Seven Rue. It's the novella following Echo, which is like a full length novel. It's a reverse harem. I really enjoyed Echo. It was one of the first reverse harems that I had ever read. And it was something so new to me, so fresh. The heroine's mute. Like it was just, it was cool. It was this woman, Echo, who's running away through the woods and she comes across this cabin. And so she decides to like break in and stay there because she literally has like no food, no clothes, nothing. So she starts staying there. And then like a week goes by or something. And then these three brothers show up to their cabin to, that they stay at for like months on end and hunt up there. And they arrive and they're like, what are we supposed to do with her? And there's a romance and it was just fun. Like I really enjoyed the first one. I really enjoyed Echo. This was just a hard no. It was, it was so not needed, first of all. There was nothing left open-ended at the end of that book. There needed to be a novella with it. So first of all, I just find it unnecessary. Two, this little scrawny girl literally fights off a bear, a bear with her own two hands. I'm gonna repeat that again. This like 20 year old girl, smaller than me, I am six feet tall, smaller than me, like tiny little petite girl, fights off a bear with her own two hands. Make it make sense. Like I read fantasy, I read taboo, I read things that are out there, but that is the most outlandish thing I've read all year. I just, I, I can't get on board with that. It was so dumb. And then two, and then three, I'm gonna spoil something here because honestly, who the fuck cares? I don't, it's my channel, I'm gonna spoil something in this. And then she gets pregnant. Why, why does everyone have to get pregnant? <laughs> like, it just, it was all a no. I've had more misses from Seven Rue since Echo than hits. I think really like Echo is maybe like one of my only hits by her and everything else has kind of been a miss. So I'm just kind of like done 
reading any of her books because I just haven't like liked any that I've read recently. And honestly, another one of hers is on this list that we'll get into later. Actually, no, let's get into it now. And that's Azula by Seven Rue. So again, another reverse harem, which I was excited for. And originally this was actually going to be a part of a Banned Forbidden Taboo reading vlog that I was going to do. Hi, baby. You gonna hop up there? Oh, you're so pretty. I love you. This was going to be a part of my last Banned Forbidden Taboo reading vlog and then I got it and I read it like so quickly that then I kind of didn't record any of my thoughts along the way. I literally sat down and read it in one sitting. And then after I got done with it, I'm like, I literally don't even want to talk about this book. And even in my wrap up, I think I like just briefly mentioned it because it was just bad. It was bad. So it follows Azula, who's um, a teenager in a trailer park. She lives with her dad, her two brothers, her uncle. And then does he have like one son or two sons maybe? So there is like full blown incest in here, which I've read other books like Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma, where it's between a brother and a sister. And that is one of my all time favorite books. And again, like thing, like taboo things that we read about in books, we don't condone in real life. I don't feel like I need to make that spiel every time, but I kind of do because I see people get so many mean comments about books that they read. And I'm like, it's literally fiction. So it wasn't even necessarily like that, that I was like, no, I mean, like, it's not my favorite. It's definitely not my favorite at all. But also, like, sometimes it can work, like, in Forbidden. But this, it was just so taboo for the sake of being taboo. Like, really, what was the point of it? I, I don't, it was just kind of, like, too much. It was just trying to be more of, like, a shock value, I feel like, than it was to actually tell any sort of story. Like, there was no depth to the characters. It was all, like, pure sex. And the way that they all treated her was just fucked up. And it's not, like, I've read other, like, bully kind of romances, but this was just, like, what are you doing? Like, it was so kind of just, like, vulgar for the sake of being vulgar. I hated it. And I think that, too, was where I was like, you know what? I don't really think her books are working for me anymore because the ones that I've read recently, they were just, like, more for shock value than I felt for story. Okay, next in disappointing reads is going to be Daddy's Angel by K.A. Knight. This one I gave three stars to. Like, I again, I don't think that it's necessarily, like, a bad book. Um, and if you're looking for, like, this boyfriend's dad's trope, definitely check it out. For me... I realized with this one that there is a such thing as too much smut for me. It was like every other chapter, no joke. And it just, it got repetitive. And that was my main thing with it is that I just, I think I wanted like a little more believability between the characters and the story where it was much more just like, we're just gonna have these characters bang repeatedly over and over and over again. And like nothing wrong with that. Sometimes people are in the mood for that. For me, I just, I wanted more out of the story. It's about this woman, I think she's maybe like in her 20, like early 20s or something, and she's dating this dude, he sucks, they break up, and immediately she starts dating his dad or like having relations with his dad. And then like, obviously he finds out there's drama with that. And the dad like was so quick to drop the son. The dad did not give a fuck about his son and his feelings about it, which again was kind of like unbelievable for me. Cause in other books, like the doctor and birthday girl, the dads at least like care about their sons and their reactions. This no thought was given. Yeah, I just, I didn't love it. And I, I know Dun & Vipers is a very like polarizing book. I personally liked it. I thought it was a fun time and it had a good balance of like spice, but then actually having like some story and like some character development in it. Where this, it was just like very one dimensional with the characters and the story overall, that it was just highly disappointing for me. This book and Azula are the two that I like literally wouldn't recommend unless if you like read at your own risk. Obviously read whatever you wanna read, but like me personally, I would never actively recommend this book to someone. And that is R.I.P. by Charity B. And this is the other, one of the other books that I read in my Banned Forbidden Taboo reading vlog, which, so the purpose of that video and those vlogs are to find Banned Forbidden and Taboo books, which I love. Also, I feel like I need to like slouch a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of like do this. So that way my head's not <laughs> as far cut off. So the point of those vlogs are to find very outlandish books. So then I can't sit on here and be like, this was like outlandish. But it was so, again, I think just like graphic and 
traumatizing for like shock value and I will say this one had a ton of triggers on it so like I don't blame the author in any way for like me not liking this book because I like kind of knew what I was getting into but also I had no idea what I was getting into so this one follows Malachi and I can't remember what her name is but another so it's a brother and a sister and their parents are funeral like directors they own like a crematorium and like bury bodies and stuff but her parents take it upon themselves that they think that they can hear God talking to them and telling them who is evil and who they need to then kill so there's like that bit of like religious aspect in it and then they obviously go and like kill people and it's like it's like saw graphicness on the page which is just not my thing i don't love really graphic gory horror like i don't mind in a mafia book when like someone gets shot on page it's kind of like okay but this it's like she like I think took like a sander to this guy's head and it was like descriptive of ugh, I don't even want to think about it like it was it was just like gross for me and there's so much abuse that happens in this book and the daughter does something at one point to herself oh my I was like so not prepared for that it was just it was way way too much for me and it was so like gory that I just could never really enjoy the book and I never could get on board with it so I mean you can see my full thoughts in that reading vlog and experience alongside me but yeah it was it's a literal no from me like hard no. I never want to experience anything like that again. Next up is another disappointing read and not like a worst read but a disappointing one and that is The Girl in Between by Miranda Silver. So this is the second book in the Boys Next Door duet. So this one follows Diana and then her two twin neighbors Ian and Brendan or Brandon? I think it's Brendan and the two of them and it's like childhood friends to like acquaintances to lovers and it's like a menage. The first book in this, some of the best smut that I've ever read in my life. Like really no point to the book but just it was like hot. You know I feel like there's a difference between spice like the um Daddy's Angel was like high in spice but I would say like very low in hotness for me. This was high in spice and high in hotness. Like this was just a fun time, the first book. And then the second book rolled around. So I didn't jump into the second book immediately after finishing the first one because I was kind of like, I don't need that right now. Like I had to be in the mood for it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna finish that duet up. And I downloaded this and it was more just disappointing because there was a lot of lack of twin action with Diana. Not like the twins together. There's like no crossing between the two of them, but them with Diana. Like they're normally together with her. And in this one, she's dating one of them. So then the other one kind of like backs off out of their relationship. And I was just kind of like, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here for Diana and Ian's relationship. I'm here for the three of them together having hot fun times. So truly it's nothing on Miranda Silver or this book or this writing. Like the book, it, it's like a fine book. But me personally, I just missed the fun times between the three of them and it was severely lacking. So it was just more disappointing in that sense because I was really hoping that it was going to be like her and both of them continuing on in a relationship, the three of them, or kind of like Diana and Brendan and Diana and Ian, like all kind of together. And it just like it wasn't. But still, I still would recommend the duet. But it's just, it's not what I wanted out of the second book. The one that some people are going to be unhappy with. But again, we can all have our own opinions. And the, oh, look at you. What are you doing? Are oh, you taking a little bath? You can't even see that she's like licking her paw. You can just see her little tongue flashing. <laughs> November 9th by Colleen Hoover. I also have a reading vlog with this one. It was like, are these Colleen Hoover books worth the hype? So you can definitely check out like my full thoughts of it in there. But... This one just did not work for me whatsoever. Colleen Hoover's books are very either like five star obsessed hit or like miss. I never have had a book where I'm just like kind of neutral on it. I either love them or I lump them into this category, which is like meh. And this is a meh for me. And I'm disappointed because I got that, like I bought this on paperback during the Target sale because I was having such good luck with her books. And now I like 
now I have it, which is fine because like I do have quite a bit of a Colleen Hoover collection, but this is one that I will never reread. It follows Ben and Fallon and they agree to meet. They're like, they meet in this diner under these circumstances and then they agree to meet every single year on November 9th without any contact in between. The premise was so interesting and that's the thing that I hate because I thought the premise was so cool and I really like the setting because you get the beginning and then every single like section of this book is like a different November 9th like where like see so then it's like third November 9th together and then like has a little quote from Ben and whatever so the premise was great here's the thing I didn't like either of the characters Fallon was fine I shouldn't say that I did not like her I was like neutral on her I didn't really love her I didn't really hate her but Ben was a red flag from the beginning. I think besides Ryle for obvious reasons, he is my least favorite hero of Colleen Hoover's. I didn't find anything about him attractive, appealing, charismatic, literally nothing. I didn't like Ben. So then therefore I didn't really like their relationship. And this was before I found out the twist. Like I never liked Ben the whole entire time. And the twist, it was kind of like I had guessed it. So it wasn't like that exciting. This book as a whole like was just a flop for me, which is unfortunate because like I do really love Colleen Hoover and some of her books are some of my absolute favorites like on my favorites list that I have that'll be coming out in like next week. You're going to see some of her books on there, but this one unfortunately just didn't work for me. So again, like it's a classic example of like an author that you can really love, but like just one of their books doesn't really work for you. And that was this one. So yeah, this one, I feel like TikTok knew that I was making this video today because then I saw a, like a trailer for this from the author on TikTok yesterday. And I was like, oh, I'm intrigued. And then I saw the name of the book and I'm like, oh my God, I literally read that and I hated it. <laughs> and that's Aries by Gemma James. I love that, again, another one that I love the premise of. So it's about this one virgin queen who she has to go to live on an island for a whole year and spend one month which e with each of the 12 like lords or whatever. And at the end of the 12 months, there will be an auction for her virginity and marriage, basically. So I thought that that sounded really cool. And they're pretty short. Like this one is pretty short. Like all of them are fairly short because obviously it's only following like a month long time. And obviously, so it follows the like 12 zodiacs. So Aries was the first one. And I'm like, I want to get to Scorpio because I'm a Scorpio, but I will not be sitting through that many books for this. Also, they're not on KU. And if they were, maybe I would give another one a shot because they are short. So it's like, if I had a second one, I could really like make full judgment, but I'm not gonna pay for it. I'm not bothered by a virgin heroine whatsoever. However, what I didn't like was, I'm like, if this is going to be 12 books, there was so much focus in this first one on her virginity. And I'm like, if there is going to be 12 books centered around this woman being a virgin, I can't. I can't deal with that. I didn't really care for her that much. And again, maybe it's like the time that was spent. Like I didn't have time to get sucked into her character, but there was just really nothing about her that I liked from what I've read so far. And same with the 12 men, I was kind of like, I don't know, there weren't any that stood out to me. So overall it was just more disappointing, I'd say, because I think the premise sounded really cool, but I just didn't end up liking it that much. I think out of the list here, this would be one that I would potentially revisit down the line. But as for right now, I really have no interest in keeping on going. And yeah, it was just overall like a disappointment to me. It just, it didn't give what I wanted it to give. Next up, I fucking hated this book. I hated this book. And that is Pucked by Helena Hunting. Oh my God. So I read this on vacation and it was the worst book I read on vacation. Obviously I made this list. So it's one of the worst books that I read this year. Although I shouldn't say worst books because I know so many people love it. It's kind of like a cult favorite, I feel like. So please, again, people don't come at me. If it's your favorite book, I'm so happy that it brings you joy, but it did not bring me any joy. It brought me immense pain. I don't ever want to hear the word beaver again because of it. I hated that she always referred to certain areas of herself as a beaver and that would make like repeated jokes about it. Oh, it was so cringy. Both of the characters were like insufferable. I hated both of them. 
you know what? Quick, so it's a hockey romance, like a new adult. I'm pretty sure they're both, and maybe she's in college, but the dude's like a professional athlete and her stepbrother is on the hockey team. So that's how she like ends up going to a game or like a party afterwards and meets this other guy. And then she realizes that she's been getting off to this picture of this guy. And I'm like, how did you not recognize him earlier on? Just aggravating to me, honestly. I just, I didn't like it and I'm bummed because I know so many people love it. I've had this on my TBR for forever. It just, y'all know if I don't connect with the characters, I don't connect with the story as a whole and I didn't vibe with either of these two. And also it was just like some of the jokes made, some of the like, I'm not like other girls. Mm, I didn't like it. I definitely do want to check out more by Helena Hunting because I know she's like a very beloved author and this is the only book that I've read of hers. So I do want to read more, but I will not continue on with the series. I know I had some comments under my wrap up of this video or even on maybe like my vacation reading vlog where I touched on this book to say that like other books in the series are better. I have literally no interest in reading anymore in that series. I will not ever again, but I definitely would like to check out other books from Helena Hunting at some point, but this one was just a freaking no. Okay, we're down to our last two and they're again disappointing ones because they were very hyped up and I was just very let down by them. And the first one is The Stopover by T.L. Swan. So I read Mr. Masters last year and I really enjoyed it. I gave that one four out of five stars. I loved it. And I was like, I want to check out more T.L. Swan books. And I still do. Like, I definitely want to read Mr. Spencer, I think is like the second one to like the Mr. Masters book. Like there are other books by T.L. Swan that I want to read, but this one, oh, I didn't like a single thing really about it. Um, Again, I found both of the characters just insufferable. And I'm like, you literally don't even like each other. You don't like each other. You just like having sex. Like there's nothing about your personalities that you like about each other. You just like how the other one looks. Like, oh, and that, I just, I hate that. I hate when it's just like pure physical attractiveness that drives two characters to be together. It felt so forced. They're constant fighting. And don't get me wrong. I love toxic people and but like I love toxic relationships and books and I love back and forth. Like y'all know, I started with after. So I'm, I'm good with the back and forth, black and white, like we're good at one moment, bad another moment. I'm great with that. But this felt so childish and so repetitive that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't really get past it. I could never get on board with their relationship. And it had kind of like the makings of things that I like, I guess kind of a little recap. These two people meet on a plane, their plane has to like land and not their destination. So they spend like a hot night together, but then they're like, we're gonna go our, our separate ways. And they don't like exchange any information. And then a year later or something, then this woman shows up to her new job as like a news reporter at this company where then she realizes that the CEO is her one night stand dude. I found him so unlikable. I liked her character more, I guess, on her own. Like when she was having her interactions with her coworkers and stuff, I'm like, you know, she's kind of likable. I kind of like her. And then she would do something with him. And I'm like, this is just annoying to me. Um, I did like, there was a subplot in this. So actually I shouldn't say that I didn't like anything. There was a subplot in this of like trying to find out there was like a mole within the company. And I did like that. But that's kind of the only thing that I liked. I hated everything regarding their relationship. But again, I will check out more by T.L. Swan. But this whole, this series as a whole, like the Miles High Club series, I don't think I will be revisiting. I know that people say that some of the other ones are better. But if this is your favorite book, I'm so happy for you. Like I know one of my friends over on Instagram, Amanda, I'm pretty sure that this book specifically is like one of her favorites. And like she loves this series. But so like, I'm so happy for you that you love this. It just was not for me. And I think it was just like a, such a letdown after Mr. Masters because I did really enjoy that book so much. And the last one, just another disappointing read where it was more let down. I did, this is the highest rated one that I have here. I gave this one three and a half stars out of five and that's Throttled by Lauren Asher. So I had like very high expectations of this, not just because of like the TikTok hype, because I don't really trust especially for like romance recommendations. I don't necessarily trust TikTok <laughs> with those, but this one, my family is very into Formula One racing. My parents met in IndyCar racing. My whole dad's side of the family is involved in racing. Like that's just something that I've grown up with. So I was really excited to see like a book, like a romance world set in Formula One racing. 
And I was very, very excited to see that sport play out. And I do say like the sport aspect was really cool, but it just, it kind of fell a little flat for me. And also the fact that this was like a brother's rival romance, I expected more, just like more angst and tension. And again, like it just kind of was like a bit of a flop. So this one follows a girl, she's, is she just graduating college and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. And she has a YouTube channel and she wants to be like a travel vlogger. And she goes on the road with her brother. I think it's his name, Santiago. I think that's her. Why well, can't, I can't remember her name for the life of me. She goes on the circuit with him because he is now a Formula One driver for this team. And his teammate is his name, Noah, I think. And they're absolute rivals. They hate each other. And then when she starts on the circuit, then her and Noah obviously start to vibe, start to get with each other. I did like the slow burn of their romance. It just... There's nothing necessarily like wrong with this book. It just so fell kind of flat for me. It was just okay. Like that's what I'll say. It was just kind of like fine. It was like a fine read. There was nothing special about it and nothing like horrible about it. It was just kind of like there. It just kind of exists in my book. So that's why I put it most disappointing because I did just have such high expectations for it. Being really excited for like the brother's rival trope and for it being F1. But meh. It was just kind of there. I do plan on reading the rest of the series because I have heard that the rest of the books are like by far people's favorites, especially like the third and fourth. But the second one, I'm just not that interested in. And I'm like, can I skip it? Because I'm pretty sure it's like a friends to lovers, which I just don't like. And we already kind of got a hint of the two characters in this first book. And I like didn't really care about either of them. However, I'm pretty sure is it the third one that has like apparently really strong anxiety representation, which I definitely want to read and check out for myself. The second one, I'm just not really that interested in. So that's kind of why I put it off. Um, but yeah, this one was just like, it was more disappointing than bad, I would say. Okay, I think that's everything. There are like maybe one or two other books that I did rate like one. I really don't ever give one stars. I really don't. So probably more of books that I gave like two stars to that I didn't include on here. Most of these, like, I just don't care. These are all the ones where like I had stronger opinions about. That is my disappointing slash worst books of 2021 list. As I said many times in this video, if these are your favorites, this is absolutely not an attack on you. These ones just did not work for me. And that's fine. That's fine. Let's normalize everyone having their own opinions on books and like being able to respect that. I still am doing two week uploads for the rest of December. I'm going to have my top 10 books of 2021, a really, really fun video that I'm kind of keeping like just to myself until it comes out. But that's going to be my very last video of the year. And it's requiring a lot of planning, a lot of thought, but I'm very excited for it. I hope people like it and enjoy it. It's going to be so much fucking work, but I hope it's great. So yeah, that's it for today though. And I will see you when I see you.